Hey everybody, welcome back to Everyday Barbecue. My name is Mike. Today, I'm gonna to share my meatloaf recipe with you. Coming up right now. All right, welcome back to the channel. I really appreciate having you here. As I always say, if you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so by hitting that button down there. It would really help me out. Don't forget to like the video, leave me a comment. All that stuff helps me and I'd really appreciate it. And by the way, I do have a link tree down below. I'll have this full description down below. The link tree will link you to all the ways you can support me, the website, t-shirts like this, so on and so forth. Now, let's get into this recipe. So. I've shared this recipe on social media, just photos. And every time I do, people always say, hey, when are you gonna do a video on this? And you know, I've had my channel for like three and a half years and I haven't done it. And it's really stupid of me that I haven't done it. So I'm gonna go ahead and share it with you today. Now, just so you know, I'm gonna be serving this up with a little bit of homemade mac and cheese. I'm not gonna do that on video today because this is a family dinner and it's just gonna be too intrusive on my family. But I will do a video on that mac and cheese at some point and I will, post it and I also going to be serving this up with my homemade mashed potatoes that I already have a recipe on I'll put the link up here for you now that all that's out of the way let me show you what I'm working with and let's get this meatloaf prepped for the pan and the oven so I have three pounds of ground beef here now this you can I you can use 80 20 75 25 you can even use a little leaner if you want but really that 80-20, that's, that's sort of your magic there with the meatloaf and it's the same thing just like with burgers. So I've got three pounds of this because when I do a meatloaf, most meatloafs are two, two and a half pounds that you'll see. I do a three pound pan of meatloaf because everybody loves it and it always goes quickly. Sometimes I'll even do a three pound and a two pound because I have both pans. That's what I did last time. I made a two pounder that my daughter took home and froze and I did a three pounder. That's the, the last set of pictures that you saw on social media. So uh, anyway, let's get started putting all these ingredients in here and I'll just kind of call them out as I go. And all the details for this are gonna be down in the description, so have no fear. So to the meat, I'm gonna be adding breadcrumbs, finely chopped onion, Parmesan cheese, and you can also go with fresh Parmesan. I'll just always use whatever I have on hand. Now we have some parsley, a little bit of oregano, now I know oregano is not like a normal ingredient for meatloaf, but it's a normal ingredient in mine. And when I added that little pinch of oregano, it just boosted the flavor just that much. So if you don't like oregano, leave it out. But if you wanna make my recipe, you gotta put it in. Garlic, might as well go ahead and put our eggs in now. Then we just have salt and black pepper. So one of the biggest things I hear on social media is how do I get my meatloaf to stay together? Mine always falls apart. Well, I'm gonna show you because this next part here is the most important part is mixing this very, very well. If you don't mix this well and you don't get those eggs and those breadcrumbs incorporated everywhere, then you're gonna probably have issues with it staying together. So take your time with this, mix it well. So I'm just gonna kind of show you my technique here a little bit. Now I like to use gloves, but if you wanna use your bare hands, go right ahead. I have no problem with that. So I'm just gonna grab this and I'm gonna basically just twist and mix together. So sort of like my hands are just little miniature mixers. And I'm gonna continue to do this. By the way, if you normally wear a watch, take that off when you do this. Sorry if I'm moving the bowl away from the camera, but it's kind of hard to do this without moving the bowl. Now once I get that kind of started, I just kind of want to fold this in, press it down. Same thing from the back, fold it in, press it down. So you're getting everything that's on the bottom. And then just keep using your little mini mixers here. This is one of the things I love about making meatloaf is as soon as you start mixing this together, all those smells just come together. And man, is it, it's delicious. I mean, if I could safely snack on it now, I might. So once again, we're just gonna lap this back over, press it down. Same thing from the back. And we're just gonna keep turning like this you're gonna kind of feel the texture change as you do this, and it's actually gonna become harder to mix. 
and you're gonna feel the meat kind of wanting to stick together, that's when you know you're kind of getting close, but you're just gonna keep doing this until it just feels that way with every single turn. And it shouldn't take you more than maybe five minutes. Now I can definitely notice that it's much harder to turn now than it was. So this is really just about ready. And I can feel that stickiness. This is just about ready to go. You can see when you pick this up, everything just kind of wants to stay together. This is ready to go. All right, so now we just have to get this into our meatloaf pan. And we're not gonna cook it in the pan, we're gonna shape it with the pan. I'll show you what I mean. So I have my pan here with some plastic wrap in it. That's gonna make this really easy to get out. Now let's talk a little bit about why I'm doing it this way. You can definitely just spray this pan with some nonstick, put the meatloaf in there and cook it that way. And then all the juices stay in and they'll bubble up around the sides. A lot of people like it that way. And it's perfectly fine if that's what you prefer. But there's nothing like a good crust on the outside of a meatloaf. And if you do it the way I'm about to show you, you're gonna be able to get a lot more exterior surface area for everybody to enjoy with every single slice. Now, by the way, you can actually do this on a smoker or in the oven. I'm gonna do it in the oven today because I think the oven recipe is a little bit more universal for people on YouTube to watch. They might be looking it up more so than they would if it was a barbecue recipe. But I've done this either way. The cook temperature is the same and everything is the same in terms of how you're gonna put it together, the entire recipe, the cook temperature, and the final finishing temperature. So you're just gonna to wanna to start stuffing this pan and pull this apart a little bit. As you put it in, press it down so that it takes the shape of the pan. You don't wanna squash this unmercifully, but you wanna press it down firmly enough that it's gonna take the shape of the pan. That's really the whole reason why we're doing this. So just keep layering that in and pressing down for it to take shape. Make sure you press around the edges so that it takes shape with those edges as well. Presentation on meatloaf is really, really, well, it's a big deal to me. It may not be to you. So trying to get this as shapely as possible is gonna be really, really beneficial in the end. And there we go. Without spending too much time on this, this is gonna be pretty good here. So now we just need to flip this over onto a rack and a tray. So let's do that. So I just have my tray with a rack and I have some parchment paper down there to just kind of keep clean up a little bit easy for this. So we're just gonna gently flip this over and this is where that plastic wrap comes into play. So I'll show you what I mean. Now this tends to wanna to come out pretty quickly. So when you do this, just be mindful of that and try to get it to where it's gonna line up in the center. If it's not perfectly center, it's not the end of the world, but you're not really gonna to wanna to try to move this once it's on this tray. So we are just gently gonna go ahead, flip this over. Lift this up, and there we go. Now we'll remove this plastic wrap. And be careful when you peel this because if the meat sticks to it at all, you know, you can rip a chunk off of here and the next thing you know, you don't have that really good shape anymore. So there we go. We are not perfectly centered on this rack, but we're really, really good. So, Next step for this is to get this into your freezer for just about 30 minutes, just to help solidify it and firm it up. It's not 100% necessary, but it's gonna help. So if I'm gonna be honest about this and I'm trying to help you to keep this thing in shape and make a good meatloaf, put it in the freezer for about 30 minutes. Now, while my oven's preheating, by the way, if I didn't mention, we're gonna be doing this whole cook at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I just wanna go over the cook just a little bit with you. So we're gonna pop this in the oven at 350 degrees and we're gonna pull this at a finishing temperature of 158 to 160 somewhere. We don't really wanna dry it out and by then, because we're cooking it the way we are, we're gonna have plenty of good crust on the outside and it's still gonna be moist and juicy on the inside. So we wanna monitor temperatures the best way we can. So use whatever remote thermometer you have. Now I'm gonna monitor temperatures today with a meter, but I wanna tell you right now that I'm not endorsing the product this is not a sponsored video and to be honest i've had two meters one of them i couldn't walk two feet away from my grill and i'd lose signal and this one is always about eight to ten degrees off in terms of temperature reading when i double check my cook towards the end 
So in other words, anytime I'll do spatchcock chickens inside or anything at all that the meter would come in handy with, I know when I hit, you know, 160, it's actually more like 150 or 152. So then I'll take a product like this, like the Thermapen. This, by the way, is a brand new Thermapen InstaRead. This thing is badass. This thing reads temperatures like in a second. I mean, it's incredible. And I actually do have an affiliate link for this down below if you want it. But I double check my temperatures with this because I know the meter is always off. But the meter is convenient to use during the cook. So at least you kind of have an idea of where you're at and how long the cook is going to take. So I'm going to pop the meter in here. I'm going to monitor with the meter and then I'm going to double check with this at the end. Now that that's all done, let's just get this into the oven. All right, so this has been going about an hour and a half. The meatloaf is sitting at about 140 degrees. My daughter's coming by tonight. She loves a simple glaze, and so that's what we're gonna go with. Which, by the way, it's just ketchup with garlic powder and black pepper, it's that simple. Now, I've messed around with a lot of different glazes, so um, I can give you a lot of different ideas for that, and I'll put a few down in the description. And you'll just wanna apply this about you know 20 minutes or so before it's time to take the meatloaf out of the oven. And you can hear my dog, he's trolling around here. Those of you that have watched my channel for a while know that his name's Javi. And I love him, but he's a huge pain in my ass. Can I say that on YouTube? Now you're starting to see the benefits of doing the meatloaf this way out of the pan because there's gonna be some nice, beautiful crust around this entire meatloaf instead of just the top. Uh, if you're a person that doesn't care about that, then by all means, just, you know, cook it in the pan. Uh, it's a little bit easier to do it that way anyway, but I just really like this on the outside. I really love that crust. Okay, back into the oven. This should be done. By, it's been about an hour and a half so far, so this should be done within, say, 20 to 30 minutes. Typical cook time for this is about an hour 45 to two hours. That's pretty normal at this temperature. But you know, every cook varies a little bit. So this one, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be right around two hours. Time for me to get this back into the oven. So it's been exactly two hours on the dot. This just hit 158 and I did double check that with the thermopen. Uh, I'm gonna transfer it onto the cutting board. I have one of these humongous long spatulas and this is what I use to get the meatloaf off here. So if you don't have that, you can take two spatulas and just kind of push them together underneath. Just get this under here. There we go. It's a beautiful thing. Man, this smells good, boy. All right, here we go. This is the moment of truth. We got the homemade mashed potatoes here. I'll link you down in the description to my homemade mashed potatoes recipe and my homemade mac and cheese recipe, which is always ooey and gooey and delicious. I haven't done a video on that yet, but I will. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see that video. I would really appreciate it. If you give me some feedback, maybe I'll put it together. It's not really a hard video, but it comes out absolutely delicious. So uh, meatloaf smells insanely good. This glaze on the outside set up nicely and it's time to dig in so here we go oh man this smells so good and just look at that crust on the outside cheers everyone don't worry I'm gonna get into these potatoes too but I got to get into this meatloaf first cheers hmm 
It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Let me go ahead and dip some of this here in these potatoes, get some of that gravy. Mmm. My goodness. I'm gonna try some mac and cheese too. It's amazing. So you know, I know this is the part of the video where people click off because the taste test is over, but I gotta tell you, that little hint of oregano in this meatloaf recipe, it's just enough to be there, but it, it's not overpowering, and it just changes this recipe so much. And uh, I absolutely love it. So give this one a try. Got the recipe down in the description. Comment, let me know what you think of this recipe. Give me your meatloaf recipe. Let me know what you do that might be different from mine. And of course, I hope you do this at home. And if you do, come back, give me feedback down in the comments and just let me know what you thought of it, all right? Take care. Till next time, I'll see you on the next episode.